feel more like a doctor now. Let up there. All right, so it's my ear. There we go. Uh, fractions, quick and easy. Hit all the four operations of fractions. So when you add or subtract, you got to remember that the denominator needs to be the same. So denominator is the bottom number. So you just leave it like it is and do the operation to the top. One plus two, three fourths. Three plus two, five eighths. 11 minus three, eight 40 sevenths. Pretty simple, we just gotta make these the same. So we got a 9 thirteenths and a negative 13 fifteenths. Pretty simple. So if they're not the same, we have to make them the same. So that's what this slide's about. If you don't know your multiplication tables real well, you can just multiply each by the other one. The other denominator is what I mean. So what I like to think is the smaller denominator, can I multiply it by something to make the big one? Can I multiply 3 by something to make it 6? 2. So I can scale this, pro this fraction by times it by 2. And we'll have 1 6 plus 2 6. Okay. And that will get us 3 6, which can simplify down to 1 half. Well, let's say you had trouble seeing that. You didn't know 3 times 2 makes 6. So this works every time as well, so if you don't know it, your numbers, you just can do this, but you might have to excuse me, simplify it. So I can take this, Good afternoon. Hopefully multiply it by each one of those. Uh, it's been a long week. I feel like we've accomplished a lot. Some days I feel like I'm just one circle. Well, let's start our weekend well, early. I'll do that. Let's pretend the bell is wrong. That's six, and eight, get your cars and head on out. And that is 3 eighteenths. And then add it that way. That always works. So if you don't know your multiplication too well, we can take this denominator, multiply that fraction by it, take that denominator, multiply that fraction by it. And we'll always get like denominators. We'll get the same answer eventually because 9 eighteenths is really 1 half. So if you want to try these ahead of me, go ahead. I'm not going to do an explanation. I'm just going to work it out. Prime number. Seventeenth prime, we're done. Here, same thing, we'll go by eleven. So that's gonna be a thirty-three and an eighty-eight. That's gonna become a sixteen and an eighty-eight. Thirty-three minus sixteen is seventeen. Seventeen eighty-eight. I don't think that's how it goes, but seventeen eighty-eight. Hopefully that's useful with the fractions, adding, subtracting. Multiplying is way easier. Tops multiply each other, the bottoms multiply each other. So we get 8 fortieths, which reduces to 1 fifth. If you're not good at reducing here, you can reduce them before you multiply. So that's something that can make life a little easier. So I look at this and see four eighths can be one half. So that's really one half. And then I have a two on the top and a two on the bottom, so they can simplify down to ones. So it's really one times one, five times one, one fifth. None of these are going to simplify, so we're just going to go straight across. Eight sixty thirds. And that's multiplying fractions.
division of fractions is going to be multiplying them, but you flip the second one, whatever you're dividing by. So it's going to be two sevenths. We're going to change it to multiply and flip that nine fourths. So now it's a multiplication problem. Flip the second one. It's called the reciprocal if you need another word. And then multiply. I see two and four can be one and two. Divide them both by two. So then we got nine times one, two times seven. Done. Simplify. And if they show up in equations, you just pray they can be decimals or something. I don't know. It's whatever you choose to do. Or you can work through the fraction skills. Or we can scale this whole problem by the common denominator and it just gets rid of them. The fractions will disappear. So we have 14 and 20. Our common denominator is 20. So if I multiply everything in here by 20 over 1, the fraction will disappear. They'll become whole numbers. So 20 times 1 is 20. So this actually becomes 20 1 times 4 over 4, which is actually the whole number 5. So it's positive plus 20 times 3 is 60. 1 times 10 is 10. So that's really 6 eggs. Same thing over there. That's like a 1. 1 times 20 is 20. 1 times 20 is 20, so that's actually the whole number 1. Now you can solve your equation. So practice it again if you want to. These are terminating decimals. That's a one half, so they can be thought of as 0.5y, 0.75y. We'd rather do decimals, or we can times everything by four. Each thing gets times by four, and then your fractions are gone. Let's look at one that's a little more messy. One third, that's not going to be a decimal I like to play with, so I'm going to times everything by three in this equation, and then the one third disappears. So that becomes three over three, or just one x. Three times 12, 36. Three times negative four, negative 12. And then we can solve it, get our answer. We don't have to really deal with fractions. We're not strong with them. Here the common denominator is 12. So if you're working ahead of me, 12 times 5 is 60. 12 times 1 is 12 over 4. So really 3x. 12 times 1 is 12 over 3, which is actually minus 4. Now you're ready to solve it. And these are just ratio equations I'd like to throw in there. Because they probably showed you this butterfly thing. That these two multiplied are equal to these two multiplied. So 5 times x plus 2 should be equal to 3 times x plus 7. And once we set it up that way, we can probably go ahead and solve it. Same with the bottom one, 5 times this, x plus 3, should be equal to 1 times that, x plus 20. And you just change it from ratios to an equation way, we can set it up a little easier. Same thing here. And that's pretty much a quick overview of fractions, ways to deal with them in equations and things. In under 10 minutes, you can't complain.